Okay, welcome everyone. <coughs> I'm Dov from IBM, together with my colleague Tobin. We're going to talk about um, hopefully unifying confidential attestation. Now we have the mandatory slide for all the talks uh, this conference. So we're talking about a setting of uh, confidential computing. We are focused on VM-based confidential computing, where we untrust the host or the hypervisor or what you want uh, outside of the guest. And we are interested uh, mostly with VMs with an encrypted memory. And uh, we'll use the terms guest or a tester uh, as the VM and host, which runs it. It's in the, the untrusted gray zone over there. And the guest owner also sometimes referred to as a relying party, which is not in the picture. That will be the customer who wants to run their workload securely, let's say, in the cloud. Um, so what we're going to focus uh, today is we're going to do a quick overview of various attestation mechanisms that we find in uh, the architectures uh, today. Uh, not all of them, but most of them. And then we'll discuss various approaches <coughs> or ways in which we can unify or reduce duplication uh, between these mechanisms. And our focus here in this talk is on the guest side. So there is a lot to be done on verification of the attestation and various stuff should be done at the owner side uh, and the other part, but that's not what, you're, what, you're gonna, what we're going to discuss uh, today. So the first, um, the first architecture we're going to uh, explain is uh, SCV and uh, its bigger brother, SCVS. Um, in this case, we're doing uh, pre-attestation, which means before the VM launches, we get the measurement and the sign measurement. And uh, since the guest is not yet running, this whole thing is driven by uh, the host. And at that point, we have a secure channel between the owner um, and the, to deliver secrets into the guest. And the, the sign, the launch measurement includes the platform information, like the version of the API of the firmware uh, and uh, the launch digest, which is hash of the initial memory of the VM, so firmware. And if it's a CVS, then we have uh, the CPU state. And that secret channel is used to inject the secret into the memory of the guest uh, if the measurement uh, matches and then um, the guest can start. Next generation uh, is SCV SNP and here the attestation is driven by the guest so the guest at some point can ask, uh, there is a mechanism to ask for a signed attestation report and that report includes, again, the platform information, a bit more extended than what we had in SCV. And again, the launch digest, so initial memory content uh, and the vCPU states. Uh, another feature which is not directly related to attestation, but we'll uh, mention it later, is that SNP VMs can be separated into permission levels called uh, VMPLs. And this can be used um, to have um, parts of the VM running in higher permission level than other parts and allows you to uh, deploy uh, things that you cannot do with a regular VM. And we'll mention that later in one of the approaches for unification. In Intel TDX, similar to SNP, it's uh, driven by the guest and it's a signed measurement report which includes the platform information. And the measurement is actually composed of few uh, parts. So one part is the initial state. So it includes the firmware uh, hash and the vCPU uh, state. And then uh, we have a mechanism or four registered called RTMRs, runtime measurement registered registers. And these can be extended during the runtime of the guest. So unlike SNP, where the measurement was taken once at launch time, here you can issue commands to extend these various 
RTMRs and basically update the measurement of what is being executed or loaded. Uh, actually, getting the attestation report is done in two phases, uh, getting the report and then using some other mechanism uh, to sign it, but for our purposes, it does not uh, matter. Another platform is uh, the S390 Secure Execution Platform. Here, uh, again, the attestation uh, is driven by the guest. Uh, it's actually, in order to issue this attestation record, you, uh, report, you must have an encrypted attestation request. So you, not any guest can just send this request. You must have a request encrypted sent over from the owner and only this request will be uh, um, accepted by the underlying hardware to generate the report. And the signed report includes, as usual, platform information and the entire uh, memory state, which in this case includes both the kernel and the initrd and the kernel command line in this platform. They're all loaded together. Also, they are sent encrypted to um, the hardware. So the whole attestation flow currently is optional because if the guest has started running, it means it was decrypted correctly, which means it's safe, basically. And now we're gonna discuss some ideas of how to unify these uh, various different things that we talk, we've seen so far. Yeah, I don't know how we decided this, but I've got to explain the problem, and then I'm stuck with maybe some potential solutions. So there have been a, a bunch of different talks already uh, this weekend that have sort of touched on different elements of unifying confidential attestation. It's something that clearly everybody kind of wants to do. Um, and it's kind of a slippery term, actually, like unifying this attestation. There's different ways to think about it, if it's like from the boot perspective or from the perspective of what the hardware measurement is. Um, so what we're going to think about in this presentation, which I think is a good perspective on it, is that what we're, what we're trying to do is measure the entire stack of the guest, of course, um, measure the, you know, the guest application and everything below it, and we want to figure out a way to do that that's going to bring different platforms together more than it's going to bring them apart. We're not going to try and use you know, quirks that are only supported in one place to measure the whole stack. But it'd be nice if there was an easy way uh, that all platforms could sort of hop onto. Now, hardware measurement is definitely going to be part of the story here. You need to measure something with the hardware so that some part of the stack is linked to the hardware root of trust. And we're not really that optimistic about hardware measurements uh, suddenly becoming really similar. I think we've kind of accepted that different platforms are going to have somewhat different platform or hardware measurements. The platforms are somewhat different. So as much as we talk about unification here, there's almost certainly going to be some step somewhere where you need to do some hardware specific stuff to understand, oh, you know, this is S&P. I can, you know, I have these properties that I can look at and that I can validate against some other policy, right? So like I said, hardware is going to be part of the story, but probably we're also going to use software to measure another part of the stack. And really the way that the rest of this presentation is structured is trying to understand what the best place is to split the, between those two things. What we want to have you know, measured by the hardware and what we want to have measured by the software and how we want to do that. And maybe if, by looking at the different sort of possibilities we can stumble onto one uh, that we actually like. Let me also say, by the way, that we talk about measurement mainly in this presentation, um, but there's some subtlety about measuring stuff versus signed stuff uh, versus encrypted stuff. We're not really going to get into the details there. Maybe at the end somebody can give us a really tricky question about that. We're mainly just talking about measurement um, today, though. Uh, so the first approach, um, we call it, you know, kind of look at it as the firmware-based approach. So essentially, the hardware measures the firmware, and then the firmware is going to measure everything else. right? And there's different ways to do this, but one way to do this would by, be by having a secure VTPM, um, basically in the firmware. Don't get too attached to kind of the firmware language here. Um, but we're really talking about something that's going to be sort of the initial memory load into the guest, right? Um, so a secure VTPM, what would that even mean? I think maybe we can understand why currently the way that we do VTPMs isn't really ideal for confidential computing because the VTPM is emulated on the host, right? And that breaks the trust model completely. So to have a secure VTPM, we need um, something that can't be tampered with by the host, obviously. But we also need something that can't really be tampered with by the guest operating system. Um, because you don't want to load the guest operating system. You know, for instance, a, a CSP could put a malicious kernel into the guest. Um, and if that kernel was able to overwrite the PCRs later on, uh, 
um, it could make it look like it was a nice kernel um, that had the correct measurement. So yeah, we clearly, to be confidential computing friendly, we don't want the host to be able to access it, uh, but we also don't want the guest um, to be able to access it. Um, if we had something like a TPM, it's, I think, somewhat easy to understand how that would actually be consumed by the, the higher levels of the stack, right? If we have this TPM, we have it measured, and we can trust this TPM, then we can use this as we go into boot. And there's already a lot of infrastructure around that uses TPMs uh, to boot in different ways. There's, there's a lot of thinking that's gone on there uh, over decades, really. Um, so something you can picture right now, for instance, is a CSP where they already have an infrastructure that is kind of built around TPMs. They already have their customers like using encrypted disks and sealing keys to TPMs. And you can do this to right, launch a bare metal machine uh, that has a real TPM, uh, or you could do it in a traditional VM uh, that has a VTPM. What if you could also just do that in a confidential VM? And what if you could do that for all the different platforms? Right? So not only would we be unifying between like SCV and SNP, but we would also be unifying between these different offerings of like bare metal, traditional VMs, and confidential VMs. That's a pretty cool um, idea, generic interface that could really be applied in a lot of places. It could also hook into something like Keyline, right? Maybe the client already has infrastructure for understanding how to handle you know, TPM quotes at scale. Maybe we could hook into that, right? So that all sounds pretty good. Um, and on SNP, we're actually coming kind of close to understanding how we can implement this, right? So Tom gave a talk a couple days ago introducing the SVSM, possibly yesterday. Time works differently at this kind of conference. But the SVSM uh, builds on this VMPL thing that Dove mentioned. Um, where we get different privilege levels inside the guest. And this gives us one of the properties we need here of being able to have something that can't be tampered with by the operating system, right? If you run something in VMPL 0 um, and the operating system is running in VMPL 1, uh, you're not going to be able to overwrite those PCRs and mess with them, at least assuming you did things um, correctly. Also, of course, we have the memory encryption. That keeps the host from tampering with it, right? So we have now this SVSM stuff. It's out on the internet. Um, just the base SVSM written in Rust by the way. Um, and I think there's some work going on to look at how to put a TPM on top of that. We don't have anything to share about that today, but hopefully in the future, we'll have more details about how the, the TPM can actually work with SNP. So like I said, that all seems pretty good. Unfortunately, uh, the next few slides are going to be a, a little bit of a downer um, in this. There's a couple of questions you run into pretty quickly when you start looking at this approach. I think one of the main ones is how do you actually provision these TPMs, right? Um, let's say in this example where we want to seal a key against a TPM, this means that we have to know that the TPM is going to have a particular key, the SRK, uh, that we can seal the key against. How does this get securely into the guest? This becomes sort of a complicated problem of maintaining a bunch of TPM identities um, across you know, all of your deployments and making sure that you validate the state, the, the measurement of the guest, and then inject that TPM identity. And remember, this is something that the guest has to do, right? So already, you might be thinking to yourself, hold on a minute, don't clouds already offer persistent TPMs, or like VTPMs, uh, today? And yeah, some do, but that's the cloud handling all the orchestration and getting the TPM to show up in the right place. Uh, if we're doing all this to not trust them, we're going to need to be a little bit smarter about how we get the identity in there, and we're going to need to make sure that it's the guest owner who actually does that. Um, that's interesting. Another quirk is that we can't really do much with the TPM until the identity is injected into it, right? If we're going to use this to validate the boot, um, and we want to have the correct like EK, we want to provision the EK into the TPM, we don't want to boot until we've done that. And the snag there is that it means that we're not going to be using something like the guest networking stack uh, to do this provisioning, because we can't boot the guest until we have the TPM. And so we're probably going to need to rely on some other way to get in contact with the host, some more support on the host. Like I said, there's already some clouds that have ways to provision these type of things and probably do this identity management, but you have to do it in a way that's trusted, right? So that's a bit of a head scratcher. Now, there is an interesting proposal uh, from our colleague James Bottomley, who you may know, um, who suggested that maybe an ephemeral TPM would be easier to manage. An ephemeral TPM would basically be one that generates a new EK every time you boot it. Um, and this, from a security perspective, would, would work fine. Basically, what you would do is you would you'd generate this new EK and you'd put the hash of it um, into the attestation report one way or another, right? So you'd make sure that the hardware root of trust or the hardware measurement includes the hash of the EK. And then you could, you know, when you validate that measurement, compare that to the EK that is actually reported um, by the VTPM and make sure you're on the same page. 
there's a little bit of a snag here, um, which is that the sealing keys to the TPM thing might get a little bit harder if you're randomly generating the TPM uh, each time. Interesting. So it gets a bit more complicated. You could still do it. You could still have you know, the, the SRK be generated on the fly, but now your management uh, engine, now the person who's sealing the keys, can't reuse some generic image that it's you know, matched up to an SRK. Instead, they have to think, oh, this new SRK just came to town. I have to seal a new key against this or whatever. So you know, we don't need to go down the rabbit hole too much here, but the point is that there are some questions about how to provision it. And another thing that I hope is coming through here a little bit is that what I was saying on the, on the last slide about how you could just plug this into Keylime or some existing like, infrastructure for verifying quotes, that's not quite true because we have a software measurement and we also have a hardware measurement and we're not gonna get anywhere if we don't account for both of those, right? So in fact, you can't really trust a quote from this VTPM until you validated the hardware measurement. Now there's different things you could do here if you wanna teach Keylime how to understand these measurements, that's something, or if you wanna have some sort of two-stage approach with a key broker that provisions these you know, identities or something like that. There's different ways to go about this, but point is, there are some complications here. Okay, and there's more complications here, interestingly. So, um, like I said, we need some particular properties for this to work. Can't be tampered with by the host or by the guest OS. With, with uh, SCV SMP, we get these properties, but with other architectures, it's not as obvious what we should do here. First of all, with SCV and SCV ES, we don't have uh, those options, and so it's not clear the best way to implement something similar there. Um, it might be that that gets left behind if we go to sort of a VTPM-based approach. Maybe not. Um, maybe the bigger elephant in the room is that it's not yet known how we would do something like this with TDX. And the thing that makes you a little bit hesitant here is that with TDX, you don't get as many RTMRs as a TPM has PCRs. So there isn't really a one-to-one -one mapping between a TPM and the TDX uh, measurement. Now it's possible that someone smart, maybe one of you, uh, can figure out a way to actually map those PCRs onto the RTMRs in a way where you're not going to be losing any information and we're going to be able to still keep the log straight and everything will work out. Um, another option is that we might be able to implement a VTPM as another enclave, right? We might be able to have another enclave that's linked to the main one um, and use that to implement the VTPM. There's some complexities here too about how you measure um, these things about how you make sure that you have a secure connection uh, between the two. A suggestion I heard the other day that's pretty interesting um, is that maybe we might be piggybacking off of uh, some features that are likely coming to the confidential computing world in terms of device support. So it seems likely that over the next few years we're going to be doing more stuff with confidential devices, understanding how to use GPUs, things like that. Maybe we could be treating a VTPM as another one of those devices. Um, and, and that might pave the way for being able to understand how we could have one VM serving as, or one enclave um, serving as a VTPM emulation, and then also a, a guest and that, can, that can also have its hardware measurement include something about that VTPM, right? So that's kind of this, um, this VTPM-based approach here. And honestly, it has some big upsides. Um, the, the idea of really standard, standardizing around a VTPM in some ways makes a lot of sense. And if we're talking about unifying out of station, there's surely some people who think, hold on a minute, isn't, aren't there already ways to unify um, out of station? A couple of notes here though. I mean, first of all, um, in this firmware-based approach, we don't necessarily have to use a TPM. Uh, we could do some other scheme for the software measurement. Like some people have talked about DICE recently, which is another standard for doing somewhat similar things. We could probably implement that in the same place um, here. And it's also worth noting that not everybody in the world actually likes TPMs um, that much. And as we've found trying to explore them, it's kind of hard to find experts um, in the TPM, people who deeply understand how to do it. So it's possible that that maybe isn't where we should be putting um, all of our eggs, but who knows? That is at least um, a little bit about this sort of VTPM um, firmware-based version. Like I said, we're looking into some specifics about how to do this. Very interesting questions about provisioning. Um, very interesting questions about, um, about how to get it supported in different architectures. But at least this is one, I think, very promising uh, approach to unification. Um, okay, we're going to go up a level now. So another approach is that maybe we could have the hardware measure the firmware, but also measure the kernel, and then we could have the kernel measure everything else, right? Um, and there's probably different ways we could do this. One would be to have like a, a, a VTPM emulated in the kernel as a module or something like that. 
Um, and here we would be isolating, we wouldn't need to isolate the VTPM from the kernel anymore because the kernel is measured, part of the hardware measurement, right? But we would need to make sure that user space can't tamper with the kernel emulation of the VTPM. Fortunately, that's kind of how the kernel's already built. That's part of the idea, so that, that wouldn't be possible. But would we have you know, really strong hardware guarantees about this? Not necessarily. Um, this is an approach that we haven't looked into much, and hopefully nobody will really ask too many questions about this slide. Um, but it is a good one to think about. Maybe this is an option. And for other parts of confidential computing, uh, there have been some attempts at unification, like UPM. Some of these ideas are not without controversy. It might be complicated to get people to agree at the kernel level, but at least it's, it's worth thinking about that if we can measure the firmware and the kernel, we could have the kernel uh, take care of things and have that be the thing that joins everything together. Okay. Up another level, the init RD. Okay, so here, hopefully you get the pattern a little bit, but the hardware would measure the firmware, the kernel, and the init RD, and then we would have something in the init RD that would handle whatever comes next, do the measurements unencrypted disk, something like that. And there's a couple different ways we could do this on different platforms already. So for SCV and uh, SCV SMP, uh, we've been working on something called measured direct boot, um, which injects some hashes um, into the firmware, um, as, into the firmware binary, that whole firmware binary is measured, and then those hashes have to match what gets passed in via the firmware config um, on a direct boot. So we could use, we, we can already use that to, to measure the initRD, so what if we just put uh, something in the initRD that will help us out here? Um, TDX actually supports this too. Um, with some patches, you can have OVMF extend the RTMRs um, on a boot to make sure that those things all get measured. Um, this is the approach that we actually take in confidential containers. Um, minor uh, uh, plot twist here, but we'll talk a little bit about that uh, cool CNCF sandbox project in this presentation. Um, just because CATA, the thing it's based on, does a direct boot, um, and when we do CATA with SEV, we do a similar mechanism. And CATA also boots to an initRD, so it's a great fit for this measured direct boot thing where you boot right to initRD. Note, of course, that this is a very constrained way of booting a machine. It's not very generic, uh, not very universal, um, and, and measured or direct boots are good for some things, but they're not great for other things. For instance, you have to separate different components um, from one disk, right? Uh, it's, it's not some unified boot image where you have a kernel and you have an NRD and everything goes together. You might have problems, for instance, if you update or upgrade one of those things, especially if you do it from inside the guest. Uh, it could be difficult to keep track of all the different components and make sure uh, that, they, that they all match up and fit together. Uh, but there are some, some benefits um, to doing this. So, like I said, this is something we're using in confidential containers is this attestation agent. Um, the attestation agent, its role in confidential containers is to provide secrets um, to the guest. It's to, it's to initiate, do anything that needs to be done inside of the guest uh, to initiate um, like attestation and then talk to some external relying party, key broker service, something like that, and get secrets from them and then provide those to the guest. This is a user space process and it's modular. Two big benefits. Um, we think. So we have this modular thing called key broker clients, basically. If you want to have the attestation agent support a new architecture, you just need to write a key broker client that knows how to get the attestation, that knows how to give it to somebody, and then can, can fulfill these two APIs, get secret and get resource. We use get secret and get resource to talk to um, like OCI crypt in this case, which will decrypt and handle signatures container images, right? Well, if you can, if you can use that for signatures and decryption of container images, maybe you could also do it for like a root disk of a VM, right? So would it also work to use this in the case of a VM um, and, and have something in the init RD that's going to help you boot some sort of encrypted disk? Maybe. Um, there are some upside to this. For instance, it's nice to be working in user space. Now, of course, we still need support in other levels of the stack, right? Like measured direct boot required patches uh, to the firmware and to QMU. Um, but, you know, it's nice to have most of the work be done in, in user space. Um, it's also you know, nice if you want to have other KBSs that are involved. If you want to implement your own thing, you want to add something in, no problem. Um, of course, a big, a big issue here is that we don't have a standard. Uh, this isn't a common thing to find in the NIDRT. The attestation agent today doesn't ship with anything besides confidential containers. It's a possibility that if we picked up some component uh, like this uh, in a distro, then you know, maybe this would be a, a, a good way to go where everybody actually, when they were just using some version of Linux, 
um, they would, in the NRD that just comes with it, they would have something that knows how to get measurements and knows how to give them uh, to services and knows how to get keys back and then knows how to hand them off to something that can decrypt a disk. That could be a big step towards unifying stuff here um, that wouldn't really involve too much messing around in the kernel, wouldn't really involve a lot of messing around um, in firmware, wouldn't need uh, like us to learn how TPMs work. It could be nice. Um, this is kind of the final option here, is having the hardware measure everything. <laughs> um, so there's some ups and downs to this. It, if I wanted to set out today and do this with QMU, for instance, um, I wouldn't really be able to. Obviously, you could change the way things work, but QMU for uh, SEV, at least, uh, just measures the flash zero. So it just measures the firmware. Uh, there's, there's reasons for this. I'm not saying that that's a bad choice um, by any means. Uh, but it, it doesn't measure the whole stack. That's the point. Um, it's also not clear that you necessarily should extend it to measure the entire stack. You would have to change the way your guest boots up, right? Because really, these, these, these uh, confidential computing platforms, they want to measure stuff that's in memory, right? So you, if you want to measure the entire stack, if you want to measure the entire application, it means that you kind of have to put the entire thing in memory when the guest boots. Um, there are ways to do this, but they're not really standard. Uh, also, this increases the amount of stuff that you have to measure uh, at boot time, which usually decreases uh, how fast you can boot. So that's not exactly ideal. Uh, there's also some downsides uh, to using the hardware measurement for the whole application. Oh, such an inspiring subject. But anyway, but there's some, some, some downsides to using the, the oh, well. It's <laughs> night again. <laughs> yeah. um, Maybe if I say that sentence again. There's some, some downsides to using the hardware measurement um, for the whole application, because hardware measurements are kind of difficult to consume, right? Um, not everybody knows. Not every end user knows exactly what to do when you give them some hash. You can tell them, oh, well, that's the hash of the kernel, the firmware, all the stuff. But how do they actually verify that? It could be pretty tricky. There might be nicer things to give them, like you know, maybe a <laughs> quote from a TPM. Is that nicer? Well, that's up for you guys to decide. Um, but at least it's a little more widely known. Now, I don't want to completely throw this approach under the bus, because there are projects that use it effectively, like libkrun more or less does this, where it puts everything into memory, the whole application. And it means that when you get the attestation report, it measures everything. And that's great, because you have an attestation report. It tells you exactly what ran in your workload. That's nice. Um, but like I said, there are some trade-offs. And one thing that is significant about this is that this is basically non-unified attestation, because all you have is a hardware measurement. Like I said, we're sort of conceding that the hardware measurements are kind of going to be different. Um, also, like I said, it's kind of hard to measure the whole stack like this unless you do some tricks. Um, it's kind of hard in a standard way to measure the entire you know, guest workload and the guest stack. And so if you think about it, this approach doesn't exactly meet either of the goals that we started out with of measuring the whole stack and doing it in a way that is unified. Now, the really not so great news about it is that this is what we do now. This is the state of the art, basically, is that we you know, leave the user to their own devices to deal with the hardware measurement, uh, except the hardware measurement usually, just by default, won't even cover the entire stack. So we need to do something, I think, to take a step away from this situation, either make sure we measure everything, but ideally involve some kind of software component in there as well. So we said we we're going to focus mainly on the guests, and that's true. Um, but it's worth talking a little bit about how to verify this stuff. And I kind of alluded to it already. Um, we think the verification mainly follows from what you implemented in the guest. Um, like I said, it's going to have two different parts, um, most likely. Assuming you have some software measurement going on, you're going to need something that consumes that software measurement that understands a TPM quote, something like that. Um, but in, a, in order to trust that measurement, in order to build the chain of trust from the hardware up to the software measurement, you also need to go through the hardware measurement, right, and make sure uh, that everything checks out there. Uh, so there's going to be some sort of two-stage thing, and that is going to make things a little bit more complicated. Also, like I said, this hardware measurement is going to differ from platform to platform. So we should probably set our expectations a little bit. When we talk about unifying confidential attestation, it's not going to be the case that we're going to have some, you know, 10-line program that can, you know, that can take any measurement from any guest and immediately know what to do with it. Most likely, there's going to be some kind of software component, and we're also going to need to understand a bunch of different hardware measurements. Um, you could split this between multiple services. Um, you could have something that handles the hardware measurement and then some other thing that, that touches more 
on the software stuff. Okay, so um, we have like, for the research stuff, where should we go? What should we do? Um, the, the first thing is probably obvious. We should decide <laughs> what we should do. Um, like I said in the beginning, it seems like everybody you talk to wants, almost everybody you talk to, wants us to standardize this in some way. It just seems like a massive headache if we don't. In some ways, it's early days. You know, like I said, we're probably going to start to understand more about how we're like adding attestations of like uh, I/O stuff um, to confidential computing. That's probably going to make the picture more complicated, not less complicated. So in some ways, maybe it's way too early. Uh, but on the other hand, it could be exactly the right time to start coming together a little bit for what we want to do and, and, and set us, ourselves up in a way that's not going to be that complicated. Keep in mind that there's new architectures every day <laughs> that are adding confidential computing support. And maybe if we start to do something now, um, we, can, we can influence the way that they go um, a little bit. Um, maybe we can't choose at all, but it would at least be good to understand some of the trade-offs and at least be in the ballpark um, of what we're doing together. Overall, I think we can understand that you know, if everybody ends up with different approaches here, uh, it hurts our efficiency as developers, and it also hurts security. It would be a lot better to have some common things that are well understood um, that everybody uses, that people have used a lot, and that everybody has looked at and sort of audited. Uh, that's probably the more secure approach rather than everybody just kind of going off and doing something um, random. So hopefully, with the people here um, and, and, uh, and elsewhere, we can, we can take a good step in this um, direction. These are some ideas about how to do it. I think now we just take some questions. Um, or if anybody wants to rush the stage and uh, destroy the presentation, that's fine. Or if anybody wants to vigorously support one of these approaches, that would be cool too. Um, but anyone, any takers on any of those options? We'll give you, oh, Crystal. So, wait, wait. Hold on. We, we don't want to repeat the question. That's too much work. So first of all, uh, very good presentation. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned the components that we use in confidential containers today and expressed the hope that this was, would go into the platforms, the, the distros, etc. Doesn't that somewhat imply that you'd go the, VTP, the TPM route? Well, so right now, the, um, like the attestation agent is mainly, we're not really expecting to use the VTPM there, at least today. We do kind of see that as an alternative. You obviously could use the attestation agent. You, know, you could implement a KBC modular component of that that consumes a TPM, whether or not that's a you know, secure VTPM coming from an SVSM or any other kind of TPM. You could fit those together. Uh, but right now, we have this measured direct boot thing. We think, OK, great. You have measured direct boot. You have the attestation agent. You're good to go. The Achilles heels to that are really the, the drawbacks with measured direct boot. Um, but yeah, we don't necessarily see that having the attestation agent would imply that you are going to have the VTPM. So uh, the meaning of my question was if you put that in the distros and you want to standardize the boot for those distros, that seems to imply, and I think that was more or less the, the result of the buff we had a couple of days ago, that the only option that works on physical hardware is based on TPM, and if we want to unify on this, we probably want to use the TPM interfaces for the virtual case as well. With the with the attestation agent, we would we would basically add something um, when we're booting up, like when we're decrypting uh, the disk that would talk to the attestation agent. Um, that could get um, like like okay for SNP, you do measure direct boot, you get the attestation report that has in the measurement of it the hashes of the NDRD the kernel, kernel command line, you don't need the VTPM anywhere to get um, the whole thing measured in that case. As long as the attestation report, uh, attestation agent is inside the initRD, so it's inside uh, the measured But that's area. only for the virtual case, isn't it? It's what? It's only for the virtual machine case, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and my point is that if you want to have the distros accept that, they probably want that to be part of the initRD. As long as we are thinking about an initRD that would be destroyed, uh, coming from the distro, built by, for instance, Red Hat, then that initRD has to support at least a large fraction of the physical hardware. Yeah, well, so I think it's, I think it's true that out of the approaches we talked about today, the ones that gives you the, the most interoperability between like a real VMs, traditional VMs or whatever, that is gonna be the VTPM-based approach. 
you know, when you look at like the hardware measurement, you know, there's no, like if you're getting the attestation report as part of this, there's no bare metal equivalent to getting the attestation report. So there's not going to be any way that you're going to be able to get the attestation report in a VM, but also do exactly the same thing on bare metal. It's really just the TPM interface that would give you that kind of option. Does that? Yeah, that's I'm not trying to force your hand in one way, but I'm trying to rehash here the discussion we had at the buff. No, I think, I think that's a big benefit of the VTPM or the TPM-based approach is that that's, that's an API that's available in tons of different contexts. That's, yeah, that's not true of anything else as far as I know. Yep. And just... I, I can second that um, in uh, VM environments where you want to have uh, full freedom over what you're executing, which means it may not even be learning Linux at all in the first place. Um, capping off at firmware level, which basically means VTPM uh, is the way to go. Um, I, I can totally uh, relate to that. Um, the, the interesting um, problem that you, you mentioned, which I, I've been cracking my head on for quite a while as well, is um, exactly the provisioning as well as the persistence. The persistence is even harder than, than provisioning. How do you trust your cloud hypervisor with secure data that you don't know actually like where you store it, but then and ideally encrypt it somewhere while it's somewhere off and then decrypt it again without having attestation done before you do that decryption again because you cannot talk to the outside network? Yeah, yeah. The, so persistence is a, big, is a big problem. And that's another sort of benefit of this ephemeral approach, which in some ways is kind of weird, but it sidesteps some really big problems. Like, you know, TPMs have counters in them. And like, how do you know how to propagate the state back to wherever it's going to be stored? And doing that securely, that's a, a big mess. So yeah, definitely keeping those things straight is tricky. And yeah, I also agree with the first thing you were saying, which is that like, if we look at what is going to require the least amount of work by distros, or like the least amount of work by different OSs and different platforms to adopt this, surely it's got to be the TPM-based approach, because everybody already supports doing that, right? That's another huge, huge benefit, I think. Correct. Also, it gives us just multi-platform support immediately. Um, the, the real big question behind that question is, uh, how do we get to a solution on the TPM persistent provisioning? Well, so <laughs> the, that's, this is where we sort of lean into the ephemeral thing a little bit. But really, it's kind of just pushing, it's kind of just pushing uh, the problem somewhere else. Um, either you have to have this persistent TPM, or you're going to have to do a lot of messing around to, like, on the fly, to change inject, your expectations. Yeah, you, need, you need to inject the, the state to the ephemeral TPM immediately after it starts, or something like that. Yeah. It's funny we're on the further research slide, because, uh, <laughs> but, I mean, another, another thing to think about is, like, are, can we get away with maybe not keeping some pieces of the state? Like, would it be enough to just have the EK? of the TPM, because you could inject that at boot, and that's not that hard. And if let you don't me, need to, let you know, Let me reword what I was trying to say. Um, I am 99% confident we're not going to solve it in this session. Yeah. How do we follow up properly so that we can not build five different solutions across the industry? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I don't know. OK, let, let's just think afterwards, like after the session, yeah, yeah. just sit down there and um, try to figure out some way to yeah. coordinate and just I'm, work together. What, what mailing list is best or something? We Correct, exactly. Let's, let's just make sure we all go on the same. Yeah. We have yep. Sergio, you want to? Sergio. So focusing on the NRD strategy, which I have to acknowledge I kind of favor, so right now, uh, in some distribution, we have Clevis to unlock the Lux devices. And Clevis is already pluggable. It already has multiple plugins. Super, you can unlock with a TPAPN, or you can unlock with a passphrase, or even some network protocol. So do you think it would be feasible to extend Clevis to support multiple attestation protocols? Yeah, I think we, we learned about this, but too, but too late. <laughs> Uh, but so I think in several senses it's similar to the KBC or attestation agent with K, with different KBCs in it, uh, which was designed for for the Kata containers, configuration containers. Um, but uh, but yeah, Clevis for example can take from from TP for example take a secret from a TPM and so on. So it might be. There might be overlap, and maybe we can reuse. 
Thanks. It also has a, a server side tang. I think it's a, have a server side component, which maybe is like the the KBS of. A... There's a. You want to go right over there? Okay. Last question. Can you go really fast? Yeah, I guess my question is: It seems like we have very different use cases being presented. You're talking about the confidential container, and we're talking about booting generic limit, you know, distro images. Do you see it as a failure if we use multiple measurement systems but unify somewhere else? Like, if the relying party code is unified, is that a failure in your eyes, or do you think that's a reasonable way to standardize? Let me try and answer this really quickly. I probably shouldn't have. Well, okay, whatever. Um, so, the I think the 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 attestation agent based approach is a little bit overfit to containers. Not entirely, but it's a little bit overfit in that it uses direct boot. That's not ideal. Like like I said, the Achilles heel of that thing is that direct boot is not great for generic situations involving VMs. The VTPM thing I don't think has that problem as much. And so I actually do think the VTPM is a pretty good candidate for working a, across a lot of different use cases. And if we do that. Then you know we can have the verification side of things be pretty unified. I don't necessarily say that it would be a failure if it's not really unified. I think at the end of the day, it's possible that what will actually happen is that we're just going to have massive verification things, attestation services that just speak a ton of languages. You know, the fewer the better. Um, but we'll see what ends up happening. Okay, that's. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks.